Hello and good luck to everyone. Uh, here we are. Most of Shabbos Mauritius. Interesting just a position that you can probably make with what is going on and how things are. But first, Bezat Hashem, we will start with uh, with the story of the Baal Shem Tov. Um, in it, Well, the story of the Baal Shem Tov is, is as follows. Just hold on this one sec. So, as I said, without the shame, we're starting now with the, the story of the Baal Shem Tov of this week in the Sikh Saran. And then we'll talk without the shame. We'll see where we go from here. So, the Maise in the days of the Baal Shem Akolish is not again away. That there was a young man who was 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 a you know a, um, he was a a, a, a prodigy you know a, somebody very very prodigy very very harsh of a big time at and very sharp and he was a big misnagged on the Baal Shem Tov. So Baal Shem Tov told these people that he wants they should try to be makar and bring him to him. So this is what they did. They, they went and they brought him to the Baal Shem <clears throat> In the very beginning, the Baal Shem Tov wouldn't even talk to him. I pushed him away. Didn't give him Shalom Aleichem. When he saw that the Baal Shem Tov is, is pushing him away, he, you know, he became in stress and tried to push himself forward. Uh, and the Baal Shem Tov would push him away each and every time. One time the man became very misheard and he came to Baal Shem Tov and really, you know, uh, pulled himself um, and, and, you know, was beaten. And he cried. So Baal Shem Tov the Meshav Tov told him, listen, there are going to be a lot of strifes of Machlekes on you. First of all, from your household. And then from the entire town. And then from the entire world until even, even the birds, even the chicken uh, will be chaylik on you. And that's the way he was. He went, he went home, and the people started, you know, chepping with him and were hoiling on him. And beforehand, you know, he was, you know, Mr. Big. He was a big time at and a Now they started disputing him. First of all, it was his family. Then it was the neighbors. And then the entire town. And everybody from, <clears throat> from the county. And he kept on going. One time he was standing there, he was davening, he was davening, you know, really with all the koiches properly. And in the middle of, of his 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 slahabus, uh, um, um, uh, a turkey flew up, you know, flew up and hit him and confused him in the middle of davening. And he would continue. And the turkey flew up against him again, as much as turkeys can fly. And again, the uh, the bird uh, banged into him. And, and so it happened again. He continued davening, and the bird again was chopping with him. And he became so upset. He wanted to take uh, an axe. And chop off the head of this uh, of this turkey. And while he was doing that, he remembered the words of the Baal Shem Tov that even 
the birds, even the you know, will will uh, will have a machlokes in him. By the way, Rabbi Wise, I think that it might be. I think you're having. I think you're having problems in connecting your uh, audio. If you can hear me or not, I think it could help if you went out and came back again. I think let's try that. And he remembered that Hashem told him that even the chicken will, will have machlekas on him. And his wrath, you know, he chilled out. And he left left the bird and, you know, didn't, uh, didn't touch it. The cloud of this Misa is to know a few in Yonim that are necessary that will pass anyone who wants to get close to Kodesh Baruch Hu. And the first so this personal method was about Shantam himself and his family. The main thing was that the more he was pushed away, the more he had to, you know, be determined and be resolute to do what he needs to do. And and the the uh, the fact that he held himself and did not kill the bird, to remembering that which Abashem told told him, uh, because if it was a very big thing for him, because if he would have killed this chicken, this turkey, whatever, it will be uh, a big harm to his avoido. But the Baal Shem Tov already gave him the refuah before the machla, and he told him, even, even the birds, you know, will come against you. In Bo Hashem, he was able to, to, to remember that Shem Tov told him, and his anger went away. And Baruch Hashem, he was, uh, he was zeichet to whatever it is that he was zeichet. This facet of, of um, that which has to go over anyone who takes Avedis Hashem seriously is an incredibly important uh in, in, in avoid this Hashem. The Kalal that everybody needs to remember, if you don't start against the Yetzirah, Yetzirah is going to leave you alone. What is it got to do? It's in the first Gemara. He says Yetzirah you know, leaves the entire world and concentrates on Israel, leaves the entire Israel and concentrates on the Chachamim. The more you are into, into purifying yourself, into getting to the tachlis of what you need to get, the more the Yetzahara and the Misnagdim will start uh, against, against you. It's very, very important. Also in another sense, you know, we all know that we are right now in in the middle of of uh, a seismic uh, event, this war in 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 Gaza and in that which that which which happened, and we have to understand we have to understand what Rabino says about this. Rabino says that the Shechina is the totality of Nishmas Yisrael. And this is, the Shechina is the cover of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Now, said, Mufurash, uh, that when there is a damage, Chasim Halila, in the cover of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that Nishamas, you know, have to, La Leinu, People have to die. Jews have to die. Because when a Jew leaves this world, he goes into Kvod Hashem Yasfek, the honor of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, will gather you. Is completing the covenant of Hashem as well. See, even Moshe Rabbeinu and Aaron Akoyim, uh, being that according to their Madrega, 
the poigim in the covid of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, they had to leave this world. And in before the Mishkan, you know, and the inauguration of the Mishkan, uh, the Kavik Kodesh Baruch Hu was on such an intense level that uh, a, a slight gum of the, the two children of Aaron Akoyan caused, two of the four, caused that they died in the inauguration of the Mishkan. Am Israel is is unique in so many ways. Right now, we have shown, I mean, we knew it all along, but we were saying that in the people of the world, like, ah, I forget about said this, not that, whatever. Um, the entire world knows that Yidin are being killed because they are Jewish. You know, the mask is off, the game is up, it's obvious. That actually needs to, to, to remind us of what we are. If those filthy, accursed Gentiles are fighting against our Judaism with such incredible resolution that literally don't care if they die in order to kill a Jew. That ought to teach us how much we have to fight ourselves and the Yetzirah for our own Judaism. It's 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 unimaginable that that there will be one nation that everybody, practically everybody in the world, you know, dislikes and hates and and, and persecutes, not for decades, <clears throat> not for you know centuries, but for millennia. For millennia, over 3,000 years. The thing that is so in, in, important about us and important to us, specifically today in, in, in the Shabbos Bereshis, we are a nation, and each and every one of us, I mean, is, is represents the entire nation. It's the only nation on earth that when a, when they take it and they squeeze it from the juice that comes out grows a different life a different beginning a new aschal and whatever Kodesh Baruch who does is absolutely perfect before the Holocaust, there was, I mean, Europe was basically uh, awash with, with, um, with um, enlightenment. So it was a threat for the entire, the entire Jewish population of Europe, which basically was the entire Jewish, almost the entire Jewish population of the world. But Victor Miller says that anybody that says that we, quote unquote, we don't know why the Holocaust happened. I mean, obviously, each God will understand it's according to his own union. Uh, he said, it's not so. It, there was, you know, a cancer that was rampant in Europe that was yanking the Jewish people from the, from the Judaism. And that was, you know, the 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 uh, the radiation and the, the, the chemotherapy, literally the chemotherapy. They had to they had to 
take out the 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 tumor, and obviously with the tumor they had to take out, you know the uh, the healthy tissues around it. But there is also the vision of the Chazanish. When they asked him, you know, what is the, why did the Holocaust happen? So the Chazanish started by saying, I have no idea why the Holocaust happened, but I can tell you one thing for sure. In the, um, it's probably still today, you know, when they make tailor made suits, um, you know, so they have like, reams like rolls of fabric and you would come and they they would choose the kind of fabric from which to make the suit tailor-made and Hazanish said when I see a tailor cutting off uh, a measure of yarn a big measure of yarn he says the only thing that I know for sure is that he's going to make a suit. He's going to sew a suit. You know, designers have this, this mantra that they are the ones who created the state of Israel, and if it wasn't for them in all the previous generations that tried it, you know, until they came and they are the bee's knees, okay? Uh Kaddish Baruch Hu definitely use them, and they have big schuyot in that. But anybody, even there were different trials before, Bar Kochva, and even the 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 kingdom of 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 Kuzaria. This is for four hundred years. It was a specific time in the history of the world. After a Holocaust, the six million, between six and ten million Jews had to die. The world felt sorry for the Jews enough they would be able to create a state. And then very, very quickly, and even this was with, you know, with the crooked nose, and the British already went together with the Arabs. And one period, one auspicious time. And a new beginning began. I'm not someone to say what is for what. It's obvious that without the Holocaust, there would be no state of Israel. We are now facing a, 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 a situation where um, It's a mini Holocaust. It's 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 uh there is a was a slaughter of the biggest number of Jews that were slaughtered because they are Jews, wantonly, burnt alive, decapitated, uh since the Holocaust. We know that there were all kinds of things that were against the code of Kodesh Baruch Hu, before before this thing happened. I don't want to rehash them because I don't want to erase any kind of of kitrug on any Jew anywhere. That's not the time. But two things are for sure. We just read, you know, a few weeks ago, Pasha's in Bechukos Yetalecha. Moshe Rabbeinu spells out very straightforward. If you're going to go in my laws, you're going to be blessed. You know, there's a whole list of tremendous blessings. And these are not just blessings in this world, because what's the point of being blessed in this world? So the Rambam explains, I mean, you know, the, person lives in this world for a limited amount of time. So why, what's the idea that Kaddish Baruch will give you, you know, the, the, the rain on time and we, you know, be blessed, you'll have food to eat and whatever. What's the point? 
So the Rambam explains uh, that it's not the schar. That's one of the reasons why El Abba is not mentioned Bechlal in in the Torah and the Tanakh. I mean, yeah, but when you believe in it and you understand that this is da, you can find it in various places. You know, you know from what they said that that uh, that uh, Akadosh Baruch who swore to to Avraham, Mitzvah and Yaakov to give to them personally. You know, as a so, what do you mean? They already passed away. And, and so forth and so on. Obviously we have, but the point is that if you want, if you believe it and you want to look for it, you'll find it. If you don't want to look for it, you will not find it. You know, it's, like, it's, it's a remez, it's a this, it's a that. So the Raman explains, this is it, it, it makes absolutely no sense for a person to spend his life with such strife, with such dedication, put himself uh, in such danger for what? To get to get more rain on time. I don't want to Khalila belittle it. I mean, but for 80, 90, 100 years, and that's it. What's what what's the point? And the Ramam says that the reason why Olam Haba is not mentioned in the Torah is because had it been mentioned, we would have served the Kodesh Baruch Hu for that, for that reason, in order to get Olam Haba. The Rambam says that all the brachas that the Torah gave, that the Torah mentions, is not the schar of the mitzvahs. The Rambam says that there is there is a, there's two separate concepts. One of them is sechar, and another is expenses. You're a salesman. You work for a company, uh, and uh, if you're a good salesman, you can take your your clients and wine and dine them, you know, in the best restaurants. You know, hire limousines to ferry you and them around, whatever it is. No problem. Your company will gladly pay you all your expenses because you're bringing the dough home. You're doing it. But if a person, and that was the big year Shaman for all the Gdoyal Israel, but if you're not doing it, if you're not making the sales, why do you want all this? How do you justify all these expenses? The Amma says all these brachas that Moshe Rabbeinu blesses Am Yisrael is only the expenses. If you'll serve a Kodesh Baruch Hu properly, which means you'll be a good salesman, doing mitzvahs, learning Torah, whatever it is, you okay, so you deserve all the, all the expenses. Then you'll get rain on time and food and so forth and so on. And that's the big, the big Shilas, the Gdolim asked to say, do I, you know, do I justify the expense account, you know, the expenditure that, that I, that I uh, um, spend during my life? We have absolutely no understanding of why Kaddish Baruch is doing what he's doing. I mean, yeah, we know we not now, but that's just the very tip of the iceberg. What we can say with a great degree of certainty is what Chazanish said. When the Kodesh Baruch who cuts a measure of big measure of yarn, he is going to prepare so he's going to sew a suit. He's tailoring something new. Where this thing is going, we have absolutely no idea. But we know that the very same way that we finished the entire year, we got to Beratius, we are in a point of Beratius, of starting again. We're the only nation on earth that the more it was squeezed, the more it was persecuted, the more it was 
slaughtered in any way imaginable, it began again. It started again. It's a new, a new racious. You know, there's a tremendous vote from Choshev Bresel, I don't know who it is. He says that when Am Yisrael have served the golden calf, Kodesh who came to Moshe Rabbeinu and told him, I want to finish them off. And I'm going to make you Jewish nation 2.0. You're an upgrade. And the Kodesh Baruch Hu uses the, the, the terminology of Am Kshe Orev, a stubborn nation. Like a mule, Kshe Orev. Moshe Rabbeinu disagrees. He does not want the new Amishra to come out of him. And he brings a few justifications why this, this is the way it should be. And one of them, <laughs> fantastically enough, is Am Kshayorif. Because they are a stubborn nation. So what gives? Kaddish Baruch Hu, wanted at that time to eliminate Chas Khalila Sony Israel because Am Israel is a stubborn nation. And Moshe Abeinu says, what's the reason not to do it? Because they're a stubborn nation. And Kosh agrees with him. Because what Moshe Abeinu is actually telling Kosh Baruch Hu is, Shalom, you know what this nation is going to go through throughout history. We already said, when Kosh Baruch Hu sent Moshe Abeinu to Mitzrayim, you already said, you know, that this is the first Mitzrayim English, going to be second Mitzrayim English, and I know I'm not going to be the last Goyal, and so forth and so on. I'm just going to go through a Choban of Bais Rishon. They're going to go through a Choban of Bais Shani. They, they're going to go through a Holocaust. They're going to go through whatever it is that we went last Shabbos. This is the only way that they can come out of it and continue is if they are Am Kshe'orev. They're impossible. You know, with the chutzpah of, of serving, <laughs> taking the golden, the, you know, the, the, the golden calf when they, immediately after they got the turn. What kind of chutzpah, what kind of kshe'or you have to be? The kind of kshe'or that you have to be in order to withstand everything that the Jewish nation has to go through. That every year that wants to serve a Kodesh Baruch Hu has to go through in order to survive, in order to make it, in order to come out of it like a phoenix coming out of the fire. Brand new, stronger than ever. Coming closer to the Tachos. Let's take a quick look. Let us share with Sichas around for this week. Being that our main existence is the Mishchus uh, of the Tzadikim, Rabbeinu said that everything that he needs to do by Rabbim is very, very hard for him. And he must have mamish and mesiris nefesh on this. And he said that before he wants to start the first word of Kiddush, it seems to him like his soul is going to leave him. And before every time he says Torah, he wants to start saying a Torah, it seems to him that the first word of Torah he's going to say, he's going to expire. Mamash. I mean, we'll never dive in front of the almond. Never. And he never did anything like this, you know, Kriyas Megillah or Kriyas Torah, or even just leaning, you know, before the Tekeh and Rosh Hashanah and all these things that usually rabbis do. Only Kiddush and Zmiras on his table, Shabbos Kodesh and saying Torah. And even this was incredibly, incredibly difficult for him. Even when he had to say Kaddish on, on his mother, the day of the yard site, was incredibly, incredibly difficult for him. 
what comes out over here is the same thing. Rabbeinu, the thing that made him who he is, is the fact that he was uh, resolute to become new all over again with every breath. You always hear from, you know, about, you know, people that achieved great things in whatever the area, of, you know, uh, in the arts and music and this and that. The one thing that, you know, those are the best of the best of the best is the ones that a total ton of vision. This is all they did. All they did was play or paint or write, whatever it is. They didn't care about their families. They didn't care about anything. One thing. They achieved in their field greatness, as it were. Rabbeinu Kodesh is Rabbeinu Kodesh because he did everything, all the time, from the beginning, at the hardest point possible. Exactly when the, the, the pedal hits the metal, on every single breath. We need to do the same thing. Uh, okay, let's let's be realistic about it. And Achinami, we spoke about it last Shabbos, uh, last Mosa Shabbos, about the, the Baal Shem Tov and the hat and the the the, the said that we ha we are connected to the tzaddik. The koyach of the tzaddik, we can persevere all the time. With the koyach of the tzaddik, we persevere, and that's the way Bezat Hashem will persevere again. Um. I just want to mention something that one of our friends, uh, Shmuel Rubin, mentioned, Shem Arizam, not to look at any of uh, pictures, images of the atrocities that these animals did. He says this is very bad, both it's mazik, both physically and spiritually. Don't look at it. Even though you know it's curious, don't just don't just leave it. Don't 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 do it. There's no need to look at news because there's nothing new. And the only thing that will happen is people get more confused. We need to know that we don't know did it. this is and we have to each of us each of us has to daven, say some tehillim, make his way to this the total amuna. Ah, our amuna is. Is small, is too small to cover the entire. That's Besalem. That's Besalem. That is the Amun. That is Amun. Amun is not an idyllic kind of perfection where nothing bothers you. You pull Elef Mitzitchau, Vavami, Minecha, you know, and while you're walking and the bullets are flying all over you and you just don't have a care in the world. That's not Amun. That's a demureness of Amunah. Amuna is when you're afraid, you're scared, you don't know what's going to be, you don't know how you can handle these things or anything that's going on in you, and you accept it. I'm scared, yeah. It's like a, a, a boy that is in, holding his, his, his father's hand. Uh, he's in the darkness, and there's all of a sudden there's a whistle or there's some an animal, like a bar door barking, whatever it is, and the child gets frightened. Why do you get frightened? Well, you're holding your father's hand. Don't you trust your father? Well, of course he trusts his father, but he's scared. He's scared. He's afraid. It's not as a beseda. It's That's the kind of amunah we need to have. Don't worry about it. Just be happy. Just be happy with every single word you are able to daven be kavona. Every single word of Torah that you seem to learn. Rejoice with it. Ah, you're not doing this, you're not doing that, and you're not this, and you're not that. Don't worry about that. Look at the good in you and in others. The only thing that that a person needs to keep in mind, which is a major nakuya during the she will learn a new Torah on Thursday. The Torah Hey speaks about the Muna, how a person needs to check himself where he's holding it as a Muna is concerned. He says because of lack of a Muna. You know, blows come down, lawlino, illnesses come down, lawlino, that uh mokus muflois, you know, it's like wondrous. It's like... Rejoice with any kudatura that you do. 
keep your mind as pure as you can. It means guard your eyes. Don't look where you're not supposed to look. Because that will create all kinds of balagan in your mind. And in your mind, when a thought comes, you know, you know, immoral thoughts come into your mind, just stop it. But it's so magnetic. It's so... Uh, okay, stop. The more magnetic it is, the more high you get from stopping it. But I've been doing it for the past half an hour, past hour. You caught now? Stop now. That's the main nakuda that we need to be mechazek ourselves. Don't let your mind become defiled. You catch, you caught yourself doing it, stop it when you catch yourself. Ah, but what about everything it already did? All those thoughts I already had. Reb Nosson says, you have no idea where your Yetzirah is coming from. You have no idea how many Gilgulim you already were in this world. You have no idea what it is that you can actually withstand and what it is you cannot withstand. It may very well be that all these things that you that you fumbled and, and you fell down, there were things behind that it wasn't even a sign. Mishamayim, they knew you wouldn't be able, you wouldn't be able to withstand these, these tests. Obviously, you cannot give yourself a hatter, you cannot give yourself, okay, you know, I, I can't do it, it's beyond me, whatever. No, you cannot do this. But keep on going, no matter what comes, keep the base of Mikdash of your mind as clean as you can, all the time, vigilant. Keep your eyes, keep your mouth, keep your mind. Don't listen to the news because they don't know anything. And they just, everything that they're saying, looking for people who is guilty, who is not, whatever it is, it all comes from the fact that they have no achiza, that they, 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 they have no, any kind of security, they feel so inadequate, so small, that they have to find out, ah, I know who is at fault. Okay, now i got some things in a proportion. Now I know. Forget about it. Don't listen to that. More fila, a shoot. Say to Hillen, as much as you say, as much as you can, kavona, and be the same. Hashem. There's a, this is a new beginning. This is a new Mauritius. Bevadai. People spoke already from Rosh Hashanah that we had Rosh Hashanah with that Kiyos on the first day. It is known to be very, very dangerous years. We would all be mechazek ourselves in the small things. Keep my mind clean. Keep my eyes from what I'm not supposed to look at. Start again. Daven. Go to shul. Put on film. Tzitzis. Gewalt. Bezat Hashem, we will hear Bezat Hashem, Bezat Hashem. And we'll all be Zorcha Bezat Hashem to see Bevies Mashiach Tzitkenu. Bezat Hashem, Bekov, Ve'ameinu, Amein Bezat Hashem.